So this is a message, it's not, it's actually for all women. It's not really a message specifically for moms, but for, for all the women. Mother's Day is a mixed uh, emotions for women um, and people. Sometimes people didn't have the greatest mom, so they have a tough time with Mother's Day. Sometimes women were unable to have children, so it's, it's a rough Mother's Day. The woman who started Mother's Day in the United States, Anna Jarvis, spent the first half of her life trying to get a day set aside to honor mothers. She spent the first half of her life doing that until the president finally signed it into law. And then she spent the last half of her life trying to undo Mother's Day. So, and she came to dislike it. Um, she said it became too commercialized, and she spent all of her fortune trying to fight against it. So, kind of, it just shows you the mixed emotions behind this day. But I have some, I've got some humor here. Some, well, I don't know if it's humor, some facts, some interesting information here. So, here's the first question for you What mother? had the most children. What's the most children that an individual mom had? So what's your thought? Six, the people that are saying 64, 69, how, how do you even come up with that number? <laughs> Were you spying in on the early service? So, Mrs. Fyodor Vazilov, who lived in Russia, had 69 children. So 27 pregnancies, including 16 pairs of twins, seven sets of triplets, and I can't imagine having four sets of quadruplets. Like, <laughs> it's another four one, another f four babies. Only two of the children died in infancy. I was thinking to myself, everyone in Russia is related to this woman. She is the mother of Russia. So here's today, the woman who's alive today in the world with the most kids is Miriam Nabatsing, and, and she, there's lots of pictures and interviews, but I couldn't find one that I could copyright to show you. But from Uganda, gave birth to 44 children by the age of 36. This includes three sets of quadruplets, four sets of triplets, six sets of twins, due to a rare genetic condition causing hyperovulation. I was like, yeah. I, now they got a name for it. So, nine, 2019, at the age of 40, she underwent a medical procedure. I, I think this is sad. So she won't be able to break the record. As of April 4th, 2023, she had a total of 38 surviving children. Can you even know the names of your kids? She's fairly young looking. I mean, when, I mean well, she's only, I don't know, 40... 44 years old, but I was thinking, if I ever plant a church, I want this woman and her family in my church plant. <laughs> this is going to be an instant Sunday school, Upward, Awana, you name it. We'll, we'll have it all covered with just this. I only have to worry about one family in the church. So, more calls are made on Mother's Day than any other day of the year. Mother's Day is the busiest day of the year for the restaurants. I didn't realize that it was the third busiest day for church after Christmas and Easter. It's like, huh, interesting. Now, I don't like this. And women, I think you should be the first one to change this. Americans spend more on Mother's Day than Father's Day. I think that's total bias. I think we should equally get the same kind of benefits. Stay-at-home moms should be making six figures. According to research from salary.com, stay-at-home moms should, in theory, make 162581 So I was thinking, that's why us men, we can't afford moms to stay at home. We have to send you off to work because we couldn't afford. So we want you to work a full-time job and take care of the kids at home. So I'm being facetious. Okay. Um, I got to do this one. This is the biology in me. And I just, I found this quite fascinating. Every female fetus, including your mother, developed all the eggs she will ever have while as a fetus herself. 
still inside of her own mom. Because one of those eggs ultimately developed into you, this means you started your life inside your grandmother. Can you follow that? It's true. I'm like, wow, that is profound. I have a new appreciation for my grandmother on my mom's side, right? Does everyone follow that? It's not on your dad's side. This would be on your mom's side. So so let's talk about Mary. Come to Luke chapter 1. I got nine reasons why Mary is this amazing woman of God and someone that I think women can emulate and follow. I think it's good to have biblical heroes. The Apostle Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. And I think Mary, the mother of Jesus, is a great role model that I hope to show you through these nine reasons why she is a woman to follow. So number one, in Luke chapter one, and she is a woman who loves God. Verse 26, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be, but the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. I just, that's, what a compliment from God. We, Mary is somewhere between the ages of 14 and 18. She's a teenager. Of course, back in those days, obviously, they got married at a much younger age. But however old she was, 16 years old, God looks at her and says, the Lord is with you. The, the angel says, the Lord's with you, and you are highly favored in God's sight. God was looking, waiting, the perfect timing for a woman who really was all out committed to him, and he found it in the person, this teenage girl named Mary. Mary loved God with her whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. She's a woman who loves the Lord. Number two, Mary is a woman who believes in God's word. So chapter 1, verse 35. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. That's going to be John the Baptist. And she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For, verse 37 is powerful, for no word from God will ever fail. Wow. Verse 38, Mary says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. I believe your word. I believe, she's one of those ones that would have a bumper sticker on her donkey. God said it, I believe it, that settles it. She also, Mar or Elizabeth says about Mary, verse 44, as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she, blessed are you, Mary, who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. She believes in God's promises. She believes God's word. She believes what the angel brings a message from the Lord, comes to her. Now, this is in contrast to Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah. So come back to verse 18 for a moment. So Mary believes the word of the Lord. But in verse 18, Zechariah asks the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And I've been sent to speak to you and to tell you the good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. 
So Zechariah, the same angel comes to Zechariah. Now let me back up. Both of them are believers. Both are followers of the Lord. The angel tells Zechariah, here's what God says. And Zechariah says, how do I know? I don't know if I believe that. I'm kind of old. I'm kind of... And the angel says, you know, because you doubted, you didn't believe God's word, you're not going to be able to speak until your wife gives birth to John the Baptist. When the angel talks to Mary, Mary says, I believe it. I'm going to stand on the promises. I believe in God's word. And I will suggest to you that in any church, both, there's two types of people. All are believers, but there are some Christians that are like Zachariah. No matter what they read, they're like, ah, I don't know if I believe that. Uh, that seems hard. Revelation, oh, that, that seems a little bit far-fetched. I, I don't know if I can stand on that promise. I'll, I'll call you the doubting Thomases. I don't, you know, uh, is it going to be the coming of Jesus that way? Oh, is there a bodily, you know, you're, you're doubting Thomases. No matter what it is, you're always questioning. I don't know if I follow that or believe. And then there's others of you that, look, God says it. I, I'm going to stand on the promises. I'm claiming that for myself. Uh, you, you're just, you're strong in your faith. Mary was one of those type women. Number three, Mary is a woman of service. So look in verse 38. Mary says, I am the Lord's servant. And then down in verse 48, she says, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. So she is someone who serves the Lord. I, some people spell service, serve us, like S-E-R-V-E, -E, second word, U-S. So in the church, there are two types of people. There are some people that everyone believes in service. There are some people that spell it serve. I've come to church to serve us. And there's others who come to church to service, to do service. So people will come to the church. I know I'm, I'm giving the secrets here. Some people come to LifePoint Alliance and say, Pastor Joe, can I, can I talk to you? Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, we're, we're checking out churches to see where we will fit in. And I'm kind of excited, you know. And Hey, we have a baby. Do you have the latest in nursery? Is there a good protection? And is there good people that are working in the nursery that we can entrust our baby to that will serve our baby and take care of our baby? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. We got the best. And Pastor Joe, we have some kids. Now, our kids are a little bit rambunctious and they're terrors at home. But will your church, uh, you know, help them to grow and and meet their every whim and need and, and teach them and give them fun and games and food and, oh, yes, yes, we, we will take... Well, we have teenagers and they're, they're, oh, they're, you know, they really, they're tough, you know. Do you have a really good youth group that's going to keep them entertained, uh, you know, so they never get bored and never go, you know, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, absolutely, we got an amazing youth group. And do you have a women's Bible study for, you know, I'm going through some issues in my life and my husband needs men's Bible study and, you know, like, uh, okay, and then they're like, okay, we'll get back to you. We're checking out some of the other churches. They have some more features that you didn't mention you know, how they serve us. And then there's other people who come to the church, Pastor Joe, and I'm like, oh, no, here it goes again. And they come up to me, hey, Pastor, how, where do you need us to serve? We come to serve Jesus Christ. Like Jesus. Jesus said, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. And there are believers, it's so nice, that say, we want to serve. We want to serve the Lord somehow in, in the church. Fourth, Mary is a woman of worship and praise. So we're already saying what an amazing woman this is. She loves God. She believes God's word. She's serving the Lord. And she's a woman of praise and worship. If you notice in verse 46 of chapter 1, it starts a section, like in my Bible, in the NIV, it, it has different writing. That's because we th we're pretty sure this is a song that she is singing to the Lord. Verse 46, and Mary said, or singing, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. So she's, she is a 
singing a song to the Lord that just the Lord has just given her. She's only 16 years old, and she's, she's not singing any hymn she learned at church. Or, she's just got a song for the Lord, and she's singing to, to, to the Lord. She reminds me of King David. When King David was a young boy, he would be singing to the Lord. He would have a harp or an instrument, and he would just praise God and sing to the Lord. In fact, King Saul said, hey, let that little kid, let that teenager, whatever, come to me. And, you know, I get worked over by demons. And when David plays, those demons flee. There's something special about people that just, they don't need the latest secular music. They're at home, and they're just, they have some kids, some babies, and they just start singing songs, hymns, spiritual songs, contemporary Christian music, or they just get songs from the Lord, singing and praising. As the children are growing up, they're singing about God. Mary was a woman that was singing and worshiping, I saw this book, and it's a book about the benefits of being in the choir. Because I, I don't know if you know this, but there's a resurgence in the world to going back to choirs again. You know, everything has a cycle. Contemporary, back to hymns and choir, back to, you know, it's like, uh. But anyway, this whole book talks about the benefits of singing in a choir. And it's, you know, it, it, there's a chapter on your immune system and how wonderful it is. And now, Terry, I now, Terry told me, the choir's up to 44 people now. Well, now I know why. Because the book says that endorphins are being released and the choir members are getting high on the stage with the singing. <laughs> and it, that's what they're saying. They get together, they're all listening to, oh, you know, they're just, they're high on... The drug that's being released is the same thing that, like, you feel if you have morphine. I'm like, no, so I... <laughs> hey, there's my plug for the choir. All right. <laughs> women, Mary is a woman of church involvement. And I know for her it was the synagogue. So, for instance, it says it was a regular custom of Jesus to go to the synagogue. Well, where did he learn that? He learned that from his parents. It also, like on verse 22 of chapter 2, Luke 2, verse 22, when the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took Jesus to Jerusalem to do what? Present him to the Lord. I love that. Joseph and Mary love the Lord, and they're going to dedicate their child to God. Godly women are like, no, I'm dedicated. God gave me this child. It's not my child. And I'm going to give this child back to the Lord and dedicate him for my child to come to know Jesus and to be used by the Lord. The rest of the verse 23, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping what with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now, I, I, I was going to show you, but we don't have time, but Leviticus 12, a woman on her 40th day after giving birth to a son had to offer a sacrifice for the purification of the flow of her blood, and then she was able to go to synagogue or back to the temple. Now, if you read Leviticus 12, it will tell you that the woman and the father were, were to offer a one-year-old male lamb. But at the end of the instructions, it goes, now, if you're poor and you do not, and you cannot afford a lamb, and you would have to be very poor, then you're allowed to offer either two doves or two pigeons. In Luke, it says they offered the two doves or the two pigeons. By the way, any bird watchers here? Any bird experts? No one. 
No one's a bird. Okay. Oh, we got what? Ethan. Oh, Gordon. You've watched them. Close enough. <laughs> What's the difference between doves and pigeons? The color. The color. See, he's an expert. <laughs> that they are actually the same bird. The only difference is their color. But it's the same bird, same scientific species. It's just we love doves and we hate pigeons. But it's the same ones. Doves are like, ha, 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 I'm a pigeon too. <laughs> so Mary and Joseph, this is why we believe, by the way, the wise men had not appeared yet. Because they give Mary and Joseph some money that we think Joseph uses to flee to Egypt when King Herod is going to kill all the babies. But before that occurs, they are so broke that they have to offer the two doves or the two pigeons. So I don't know how I got sidetracked this week when I was studying this, but I, I, was, I was reminiscing about Robin and I. Now I have to back up and tell you this. So I'm on the, on the site and I noticed, it was in the news, I guess, first, that there are 1,500 dating apps. Okay, I've, praise God, they didn't exist when I was growing up. Dating apps was the pastor of the church trying to set you up. Okay, so the dating apps are, there's 1,500 of them, and they ask, most of them ask, what kind of money do you make? Or if they don't ask that, they go, what is your career? So that way, you know, like if you put down, I'm a doctor, you know, like, oh, lawyer, you know. I, I was like, well, what's the poor careers? You know, I was like thinking, a plumber? No, the plumbers might be richer than the doctors today. Everything's like upside down. You can't like, how do you even tell anymore? But anyway, then, then so in this news article, it was talking about the women who are looking for a match, and it was saying, look, you can fall in love with a rich man just as easily as a poor man. So eliminate the poor men, and we've helped you because they all have their salaries. Eliminate them and only date the rich men. You with me? Well, I, that just, I don't know why the hair on my neck goes up. When I met my wife, I was a lowly broke pastor. And I said to my wife, dear, if, I don't know if I called you dear then, but honey bun, I, I don't know what, I, I didn't call you honey bun, so I know. <laughs> uh, um, if, if you marry me, I am broke. We were both broke. We were in the negative, if, if you understand that. We owed more money. If you marry me, I am a broke pastor and and I truly did believe this for 10 years at least, I'm always going to be a broke pastor because pastors are always broke, okay? And I had no idea that about how the Lord can multiply blessings to a minister, okay? And guess what my wife said, even when I said to her, we're gonna be broke. You know what she did? Do you think she meant... She still married me. She loved me for me. She loved me for me and our walk with Jesus. And, and it was just, I, 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 I just find it tough, like, there's motives. Anyway, it just reminds me, Joseph and Mary were married. And it wasn't because Joseph was rich or Mary had a great inheritance or whatever. It just, it's just, it's nice when you're young and you don't have anything and you're just in love because of who you are and not because of what you're going to have in the future or something like that. So, all right. Six, Mary's a woman who cherishes memories. Luke chapter 2, it's a shepherd. She gives birth to Jesus. The shepherds come, and then they, they leave, and we read, let's see, verse 19. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. So she treasured up these things. And then we read it again in, let me see, chapter 2, they, when they went to 
Jerusalem and they lost Jesus and then they find him. Verse 51, then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them, but his mother treasured all these things in her heart. So lots of studies show that it is women who treasure and cherish memories way more than men. And the, the reason we kind of know this is, um, is let's, let's start with scrapbooking. Scrapbooking is the ultimate in putting treasures and pictures and, and memories. All right, how many women do scrapbooking, have done scrapbooking? Raise your hand. All right. How many men have done scrapbooking? Raise your hand. Okay, one. <laughs> one. Good. See me afterwards, because I've been thinking about doing it. But I've been embarrassed to talk about it, because I know all the rest of the men are going, what's wrong with you? You're not a real man if you're scrapbooking. But I'm thinking sometime in the future. Not yet. So, um, my wife, we have, we have seven kids, one's in heaven. We have in our home six large combat Tupperware boxes that are huge. There's six of them, and they have the names of our six kids. And in each of those boxes is their pictures, their report cards, their artwork through high school, their college, you name it, everything, every card, Mother's Day card, Christmas card, every gift, you name it, the boxes are packed with their memories. The kids will come over, our grown kids, and they want their boxes, and we go, no, no, not yet, because someday when we retire, we're going to make scrapbooks, take pictures. Then you can have them. But they'll just come over, open it up, and go through like, whoo. You know, I remember this, especially with their boyfriends and girlfriends and stuff like that. But it's my wife that does it. It's women that are into cherishing memories. So I was, I, I know I'm going to get myself into trouble. Who, who do you think takes more pictures with cameras and posts on Facebook, men or women? What do you think? It's, it's like women by eightfold. It's something built in women. Us men, we wouldn't have any pictures. We would, have, we would just work through life and come to the end of life and go, what happened? I don't remember anything. It's the women that go, dear, we had kids. We moved here. I got pictures. I got, oh, thank goodness, someone took them. So... Praise the Lord for women. You, in that scripture, you don't find any other man in scripture that goes, I treasured those memories, you know. There's, it's Mary. It's the women that does this. Seventh, Mary's a woman who gives good advice. John chapter 2. So now we're zooming through history. Jesus is a grown adult. This is at the wedding of Canaan. They run out of wine. You know the story, right? And... Mary, the, the servants come to her like, hey, what, what should we do? What, what, what's going to happen? These are officially the very last words of Mary. This is not the end of Mary on the scene, but these are the last words that Mary says that's recorded in the scriptures. So verse 5, his mother said to the servants, the last words of Mary, do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he tells you. I love that. Do whatever Jesus tells you. So godly women, I know women like to, you know, counsel and talk to each other. And, you know, let's talk about kids. Let's talk about husbands. Let's talk about life, school, you know. But the godly woman at the end of the day, when, when they're giving advice, the godly woman is... What does Jesus say? What does Jesus tell you? You need to do, you know, you get all kinds of advice from all the different people, but it comes down to this. You need to do whatever Jesus tells you to do. That's the best advice. It's, you know, it's like the only words of Mary from the birth of Jesus to the, that's recorded in Scripture. Do what Jesus tells you. Come to John, number 8. John chapter 19. So Mary, we find Mary now at the cross of Jesus. 
Verse 25, near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, this is John the apostle, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. So I, I think about communion. Once a month, we have communion, which to me is like drawing near to the cross to remember that his body was broken and his blood was shed. A godly woman is at church and she's having communion. She comes near to the cross of Jesus. And then the final, this is the final word that we have on Mary. This is, so come just a couple more chapters in your Bible to Acts chapter 1. I only have to flip one page. Acts chapter 1 is the last time now that we are going to read about Mary. So, in the beginning of Acts 1, Jesus shows himself to many people, that convincing proofs that he was alive. So, he showed himself to the apostles. He shows himself to 500 brethren at the same time. I have to believe, though I'm going to tell you, it, there's nowhere recorded specifically that Jesus appeared to his mom, but I have to believe that he did. Since he appeared to so many other people, I would think Mary got to celebrate Easter and the resurrection. But at the, after Jesus ascends back up to heaven... Then we read in verse 12, Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs. We call this the upper room. They went to the upper room where they were staying. Those present were, here's the apostles, Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and, and here's the last time she is mentioned, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his who? His brothers. That's, that's so amazing to me that the brothers are now believers as well. They're half-brothers. Same mom, different father, right? They're half-brothers, but they now are in the upper room, and they're praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and they're believers. I think that's the most amazing thing, because I have one brother. If I told my brother, hey, Dennis... I am the Messiah. I am the perfect son of God that has never sinned. My brother would be rolling on the ground laughing. He'd be like, you've you got to be kidding. The fact that the brothers are in that upper room and they believe that Jesus is the son of God and the Messiah speaks like, wow, powerful. They're in the upper room where in chapter 2, the Holy Spirit comes down upon them. And as some have said, Mary is the only one who hit all four of the Christian main holidays. She's the only one in all history. She was at the Christmas, at the birth of Jesus. She was at Good Friday at the cross. She got to celebrate the original Easter of the resurrection of Jesus, and she was there on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out. She's the only one that hit all four. So, here's how I want to close, and I know we're running out of time. So, say, do you have a closing song? Is it? Okay, we might have to put it on hold. I, here's what I want to do. I want to pray for the women. I want to pray for any woman that... Let's just pray for the women. So if the men would get up, 
And, okay, here's how we're going to do this. I was, I was thinking about this. Women, I, I want to put, put your arms out so that a man can put his hand on your arms, okay? And then I want to pray for the women. I'll pray. So, men, I just want you to, like, put your hand on two women on their arms, okay? So, men, move around so that all the women are covered. And I'm not going to go on until this is done. Yeah. So the men, you might have to spread around. Uh. All right. Are there any women that you do not have a hand on your arm? Okay. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? All the women are covered? Forever hold... I know that's not good. <laughs> okay. Father, we thank you for the women of this church. And I know, Lord, I was preaching about Mary, but I was thinking we have an incredible amount of women who love the Lord with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. We have women here who are women of the word of God, who believe what God says. We have women here of worship and praise. We have women here who cherish the precious memories of life. We have women here who come to the foot of the cross. We have women in this church that our church has more volunteers than most churches would ever dream of. That are women of service. And Lord, I pray, we pray as we lay hands on the women of the church that you would pour out your spirit upon the women here this morning. That your spirit of love and joy and peace would come upon the women of this church. That you would empower them you would strengthen them, that the joy of the Lord would be their strength, that they would have incredible love for their loved ones and families and friends and, and spirit of God, that you would bless them, that you would make them happy as they walk with you. May you protect them from the enemy. May they have spiritual eyes to see you, Jesus. Fill them from head to toe, fingertip to fingertip. Fill them spirit, soul, body, mind, and bless them this day. In Jesus' name we all pray, amen.